again, my name is Ravina and I am speaking from South Asia. Hi, I'm David and I'm speaking to you from Canada. And we are back to give you some updates about IJM's global work of protecting the poor from violence, even as we navigate the COVID-19 situation. But before that, David, how was your week? Well, I've had a good week, Ravine. It's been nice weather. Um, we've had some rain, which is also good because the fields were very dry. The farmers needed the rain. And actually, at IGN, we've started our campaign to raise funds for Ghana to rescue children from uh, the fishing industry, from slavery in the fishing industry. And we'll hear a little bit about that later on. Back to our updates, IJM is currently protecting the poor from violence through three ways. One is through immediate response, that is to see that we offer and render our support to anyone who is affected with COVID-19 and its whole situation. Secondly, the near-term response, which is that IGM did not shut its rescues and investigations and they continue doing the same. Thirdly, the long-term response, which is to partner with the government to see that they protect the poor from violence. So for an immediate response, that's helping people affected by COVID-19 now. For this, we're going to Kenya. In the communities we serve, the COVID-19 pandemic has had the harshest impact on vulnerable women and children who are experiencing increased levels of violence and trafficking. This has been especially the case in countries where perpetrators act with impunity and without fear of being caught. This was the case in Kenya until recently. Last month in Mombasa, we secured the first arrest through our new child sex trafficking project in Kenya. An influential man was arrested after evading police for five months. Seda was sent to his villa by her mother on the pretext of meeting a man who would financially support her education. Instead, and with her mother's full knowledge, he sexually abused Seda. We're celebrating the persistence of the local justice centre which persevered with her case until police took action. On the day of the arrest, Sadie was sitting her primary school completion exam, after which authorities took her to a shelter where she's now receiving care. Wow, this story just helps us understand the need for strong justice systems. I have been a witness to some strong local justice systems and I have seen the positive impact it has had on our survivors. Thank you for sharing the story of hope, David. Secondly, for our near-term response, IJM is continuing to do their rescues and investigation. For this, I will be taking you all to South Asia, Bengaluru. IJM, with their partner organization, FSD, known as the Foundation for Sustainable Development, came together with local authorities to help and rescue 14 individuals, including four children, out of bonded labor in a construction site in Bengaluru. They had been enslaved for four years in that construction site. Remember, David, I told you that I believe in strong justice systems. The local justice system in Bangalore came together after the rescue and they gave the survivors the release certificates, declaring them free of all false debt to the owner. They did not stop there. They gave them some temporary housing, they gave them medical care, they also gave them protective gear. And guess what? They gave them good warm food, which is a blessing for the survivors just before they were repatriated back home. Quoting one survivor, he said, I am free. I am free to go back home. I am free to educate my children. I am free to eat food and I am free to find a job that interests me. IJM has safely repatriated all survivors to good communities which are safe as of now. They will continue supporting the government and the survivors to fight the legal battle which is against the owner who enslaved them for four years. Hope, healing and change are all possible for the enslaved and their families around the world because of people like you and me who believe in changing and ending slavery one step at a time. Wow, what a fabulous story, Ravina. Thank you for sharing that. And it just shows that rescue is actually the beginning of restoration. And also that part of restoration, a big part, is going after the perpetrator and making sure that he's not around to, 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 to put anyone else in a position where they are going to be in, in slavery. 
So a great story and it just shows that IGM is working across the world, even during COVID-19, to solve these problems and that slavery really doesn't need to exist. Well, finally, for a long-term response, that is partnering with governments to protect poor people from violence and slavery. Well, for this, we're going to Ghana. Lake Volta is the world's largest man-made lake on which thousands of children work in its massive fishing industry. Many of these children are held in slavery. Children as young as three years old are forced to do hard and dangerous work to earn a profit for their masters. In Ghana, IGM works with local police and partners to prevent child labour and help rescue and restore children who have been trafficked or forced into work on Lake Volta. There is hope. Since opening in 2014, IGM Ghana has rescued over 221 children. More are waiting to be rescued. Together, we can bring them to freedom. Stay tuned in the upcoming weeks during June to hear the stories of children who have been rescued from slavery on Lake Volta. To me, Lake Volta has always been a place that brings in great stories of joy and hope. I'm totally looking forward for this. Check out this recent interview with Godwin who we spoke of last week. Godwin talks about his second chance in life after rescue. Hello, I'm Gugu Godwin, a survivor of child trafficking, but I'm at home now with my parents and I'm very happy being with my parents now. And I'm at the senior high school studying general science because I want to become medical doctor. To become a medical doctor is not easy, but putting in more effort to achieve it. And I'm thanking all my races for the great things that they are doing for me and other children. And I thank them to rescue more children to achieve their dream and be happy as I am. Thank you. For the whole of June, we are raising funds to send rescue to children being trafficked into slavery on Lake Volta. We are thankful again to head coach Rob Gale from the Canadian Premier League's Valor FC here in Winnipeg for getting behind this campaign. And here he is just sharing a few words. Ghana's Lake Volta is the world's largest man-made lake. It's home to a massive fishing industry where thousands of children are enslaved and forced to do dangerous work to earn a profit for their masters. Valor FC are standing with International Justice Mission Canada to bring rescue and restoration to children who are being trafficked into slavery mending fishing nets on the lake. By sending a gift today, you can help children and families around the world return to a life of freedom and safety. And up until June the 30th this year, your gift will be multiplied up to $20,000. To find out more, please click on the link below. Whatever you are able to give, it will be multiplied up to $20,000. And to give, just simply go to our website, www.igm.ca. Thank you for tuning in into IGM Updates this week. Please do click the like button, do share, do comment, and do subscribe to our channel if there is any story that has impacted you and touched your life. Until next time, stay safe, God bless, have a brilliant week ahead. Yes, indeed. And I'm going to enjoy watching the Canadian Premier League come to Winnipeg on the 26th of June, I think, to play here. So very excited about that. Have a great weekend. See you 